Sunrise on the Hills. A poem written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow was born in Portland, United States on February 27, 1807 and died on March 24, 1882. He was an educator, traveler, a linguist, and a romantic. Sunrise on the Hills by H. W. Longfellow is a celebration of the healing power of nature. The poet muses upon the morning sun shining on the woods and hills, and urges readers to return to the lap of nature to soothe their souls. Throughout the poem, Longfellow compares the sun to a knight, and nature to his sweetheart, the princess. I stood upon the hills, when heaven's white arch was glorious with the sun's returning march, and woods were brightened, and soft gales went forth to kiss the sun-clad veils. The clouds were far beneath me, bathed in light. They gathered midway round the wooded height, and, in their fading glory, shone like hosts in battle overthrown. As many a pinnacle, with shifting glance, through the grey mist thrust up its shattered lance, and rocking on the cliff was left. The dark pine blasted, bare, and cleft. The veil of cloud was lifted, and below. Glowed the rich valley, and the river's flow. Was darkened by the forest's shade. Or glistened in the white cascade. Where upward, in the mellow blush of day. The noisy bittern wheeled his spiral way. I heard the distant waters dash. I saw the current whirl and flash and richly, by the blue lake's silver beach. The woods were bending with a silent reach. Then o'er the vale, with gentle swell, the music of the village bell, came sweetly to the echo-giving hills. And the wild horn, whose voice the woodland fills, was ringing to the merry shout, that faint and far the glen sent out, where, answering to the sudden shot, thin smoke, through thick-leaved branches, from the dingle broke. If thou art worn and hard beset, with sorrows, that thou wouldst forget. If thou wouldst read a lesson, that will keep thy heart from fainting and thy soul from sleep. Go to the woods and hills. No tears. Dim the sweet look that nature wears. Analysis he poem opens with a description of the grand, glorious returning march of the sun which the poet witnesses from the top of a hill. Nature, the princess, has been waiting long under captivity. Now the city gates heaven's white arch is glorious with the night's arrival. The sun's glory outshines everything else, and the clouds that have gathered midway round the wooded height now look like an army overpowered in battle. The enemy forces retreat and rocking on the conquered fortresses left the dark pine blasted, bare and cleft. The veil of cloud is lifted from above the face of Princess Nature and the sun's first rays leave a mellow blush on her face. Nature begins to smile, and the rich valley begins to glow with all her charm. The distant waters dash and the current whirl and flash. And the lakes, Princess Nature's blue eyes, with their silver beaches and the woods bending over them like eyelashes, brighten up. From the beautiful sights of the valley, the poem gradually moves on to the mesmerizing sounds that the valley sends out. Nature begins to sing and the noisy bittern wheels his spiral way up as in a musical note. The music of the village bells echoes in the hills. The voice of the wild horn and the merry shouts from the valley fill the air. Watching sunrise on the hills leaves a profound soothing effect on the poet and the poem ends with a piece of advice to the readers. Whenever you are surrounded by the sorrows of life, whenever you fall upon the thorns of life and bleed, go to the woods and hills. Nature's charm will never fail to leave a smile on your face.
It has everything in it to keep your heart from fainting and your soul from sleep. No tears can blur the beauteous look that nature wears for us.